Okay, we are in. <laughs> That's right. Um, we're in Joshua chapter 22. This is second week, so B. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll start. We'll go there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it through again, and we're going to discuss. As last, last week, if you weren't here, uh, I think that might just be Mike not here. Anyway, I studied I studied chapter twenty three. Showed it about thirty minutes out, out, an hour out. Harry called me. Hey, where are you teaching? Twenty three? No, you're not. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we're going to go back over twenty two a little bit. Um, it's a pretty long chapter, so I'm going to I'm going to read it and we'll just make some commentary and application. Um, but let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for these men. I thank you, God, for you. I thank you, Lord, that you have uh, made yourself available to us for us to know you, for us to have a relationship with you. God, you've created eyes for us to see everything you've made. You've created touch that we can touch. Um, all that you've created and you've created our mouths and our ears, God, that so we can uh, hear and speak words and learn about you. And so, God, I thank you for that. It didn't need to be so, but you made it that way. You God, thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it is the foundation that we can build our life on. God, build in us that faith that we trust your word above all things and it's the foundation upon which we build our understanding of the world. Lord, help me to, to get out of your way tonight and teach us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Joshua 22. Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, RGM from here on out, and said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded, all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days <coughs> up to this day, but have kept charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now therefore return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast him, to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them, and they went to their town, to their tents. And now half the tribe of Manasseh, and now to half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given a possession in Bashan, but to the other half of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tents with very much livestock with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron and with very much clothing divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren so the children of Reuben children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they have obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. We're in 22, verse 9. And when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, RGM built an altar there by the Jordan a great impressive altar. Now the children of Israel 
heard someone say, Behold, RGM hath built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan on the children of Israel's side. And then the children of Israel heard of it. The whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. Then the children of Israel sent Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest to the children of Reuben, children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, into the land of Gilead. And with him ten rulers, one ruler each from each, from the chief house of every tribe of Israel. And each one was the head of the house of his father among the divisions of Israel. Then they came to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and they spoke to them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following Excuse me, the Lord, in that you have, my eyes, I'm getting old. It's official. It's not good. Where am I? Where to go? Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, what treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord, and that you have built for yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord. Is the iniquity of Peor not enough for us, from which we are not cleansed till this day, although there is a plague in the congregation of the Lord, that you must turn away, <coughs> excuse me, turn away this day from following the Lord. And it shall be, if you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, then cover, excuse me, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and take possession among us. But do not rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides the, alt besides the altar of the Lord our God. I'm sorry, guys. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man did not perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the divisions of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knows, and let Israel itself know, if it is in rebellion or if it is in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. But if we have built ourselves an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer on it burnt offerings or grain offerings, or if to offer peace offerings on it, let the Lord himself require an account. But in fact, we have done it for fear, for a reason, saying, in time to come, your descendants may speak to our descendants, saying, What have you to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord has made the Jordan a border between you and us. Your children of R.G. Oh, no, no Manasseh there. Of Reuben and children of Gad, you have no part in the Lord. So your descendants would make our descendants cease fearing the Lord. Therefore we said... <coughs> Sorry. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offering nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between you and us and our generations after us, that we may perform the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, with our sacrifices, and with our peace offerings, that your descendants may not say to our descendants in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore... We said that it will be when they say this to us or to our generation this time that we may say, here is the replica of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made, though not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between you and us. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn 
from following the Lord this day to build an altar for burnt offerings, for grain offerings, for sacrifices, besides the altar of the Lord our God, which is before his tabernacle. <coughs> Excuse me. Man. Now, when Phineas, the priest, and the rulers of the congregation, the heads of the divisions of Israel, who were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because you have not committed this treachery against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, and the rulers returned from the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, from the land of Gilead, to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought back word to them. So the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God. They spoke no more of going against them in battle to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar witness, for it is a witness between us that the Lord is God. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Ah, just getting over a cold still. Um, we're going to jump back to nine ish, ten ish. Just kind of where I left off last week. And if you recall, this I made some uh, some stink about the now the children of, in eleven. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, talking about the fact that we need to be careful when we hear someone say and what our reaction is. Um, they have they have done the right thing to a degree, because God in um, in Deuteronomy twelve and thirteen. So what they heard they heard there's an altar been built. This set off alarm bells. That was that was no joke to them. If you go here. <coughs> To 12, uh, Deuteronomy 12, 1, These are the statutes and the judgments which you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Lord your God of your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess serve their gods in the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. You shall also destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and burn their wooden images with the fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names from that place. You shall not worship the Lord your God with such thing, but you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses. Where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place, and there you shall go. <coughs> so here we are. The nine and a half tribes, they hear there's something going on here. They're, they built an altar. But God said only worship where he said to worship. And so we have this scenario where they are responding. If you look at, at 13, um, 12, if you hear someone in one of your cities which the Lord your God gives you to dwell and saying corrupt, corrupt men have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of their cities, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Then you shall inquire, search out, ask dil diligently. And if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination is committed among you, you shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it, all that is in it, and living with the edge of the sword. So you have nine and a half tribes. They hear about an altar being built not where God has prescribed it to be built. They, they are warned against idolatry often. They fall, if we follow into judges and on through their history, they fall into idolatry often. And, th and this is a 
So their initial response here in Joshua, although over the top, they probably, somebody should have gone and investigated on a, maybe whoever heard the someone say something, they should have gone and investigated, followed something like a Matthew 18 type of ideal of, let's look, let's, let's find out before we go and start a civil war against these people and declare them as wrong. Maybe they didn't build altar. Maybe someone's just making something up. Maybe there's another side of the story. Maybe they're absolutely right in, in having, having been uh, <coughs> concerned. And I think that they were right. And if you think about the, the two and a half tribes on the um, east side of the river, east side of the river, right? On the east side of the river, they have already made a decision. If you, if you look up here in 20... Twenty two verse twenty five for the Lord has made the Jordan a border between you and us. Who asked for that border? Who asked for the Jordan to split them? <coughs> the Lord conceded, he allowed Moses to give them that land, but that wasn't his initial intent. He wanted he wanted his people to be on the other side of the Jordan. He wanted his people, so they made a choice. The Lord ceded. And this, this separation now in, the, now in their mind has planted a fear. We've, I've separated myself from the body for, for some reason. I'm mad at Nick because he wears blue shirts. I mean, I was mad at him. So now, now there's, a re, there's a separation there. They separated themselves because, man, they had a lot of sheep in the, in the, in the east side of the Jordan there. Wow, this looks like a good place for a lot of sheep. So we can come up with all sorts of good sounding reasons why we should separate ourselves from our brothers and sisters. But when we start down that path, it just leads to further and further separation. Step two of this separation. So they, they had this decision of separations. Then you had seven years of commitment to serving their brothers and sisters. To, to routing the enemy out of the land, to clearing the land and helping them settle and, and fulfill their commitment to the other nine and a half tribes. But then as they're going back towards that separation, they do something out of fear because of that separation. Well, for the children, let's build this, let's build this altar for the children. So, they, so our, our children and your children, they'll, they'll know we're going to point to this thing I go to church. I'm a Christian. I have a relationship with God. I go to church. See, there's an altar. We know God. We belong to God. There's, there's a something that we belong to God. And PD, uh, as, as looking into this, I listened to PD's teaching of 22, and it's, he makes a very poignant point on that. And how, what, what things do we stand up? Things physical things, actions that we may do, actions that we may, may not do, that tend to be <clears throat> supplant an actual relationship with the Lord. Instead, they are, we point to that. Look, I, I don't sleep around. Look, I don't drink. Look, I go to church every single Sunday. Look, I got a fish on my car. Look, what, whatever it may be. I support gospel for Asia. What, whatever, whatever these things may be, they, they may well be excellent things. They may be good, good or bad things. Here, here I'm going to be honest, end of the day, this, this passage doesn't seem to give us an indication whether this was you know, necessarily the wrong thing to do. You, you bring, you know, the, the full scope of Scripture would certainly tell you they probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, the result is, you know, uh, I didn't do the calculation. Many hundreds of years later, those people on the east side of the river are, are raising pigs. They've so far separated themselves from 
the worship of God and their people that now they're pig raisers. These are the same people who uh, were raising the pigs that Jesus sent over the cliff with, with the demons. And so <coughs> the, the steps that we begin to take we can't course correct. And PD mentioned this, this example is, is, is when you, if you leave Los Angeles heading for Hawaii and you're just one degree off, unless you correct that one degree, you're never going to get to Hawaii. You'll wind up Asia, Australia, somewhere down there. And so we must have a course correction and they never had that course correction, they began the separation, they began the, uh, to take them. And so I ask you and I ask me is, is, are there course corrections needed for you? Are there um, steps that you've taken too far down a given path? Maybe it wasn't a bad thing you did, but was it what the Lord wanted you to do? You know, we we often hear our brothers and sisters when they're separating themselves from the church. They have a pretty good churchy answer for why they're leaving. I just feel like the Lord's leading me here. I just feel like, you know, my, my season here is done. And I think those could be true. They could be true. But we need to be careful. So let's continue on, sir. It's in 12. And then the children of Israel heard of it, and the whole congregation gathered. I'm not going to read every verse for verse. So they came down to 16. Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following <coughs> the Lord, and that you have built for yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of Peor not enough for us? And we looked at, back to Numbers 25 and get an idea what that's talking about. Again, we're talking about idolatry. Numbers 25. Now Israel remained in the Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. And that passage goes on to talk about how that, because of that sin, there was a plague. Because of that plague, 24,000 people died. Because of that sin, they're saying that sin, though the plague is gone, though the specific direct result is gone, we're still dealing with the sins of that. We're still dealing with the, uh, the, the corruption within our people because of that. Is the iniquity of Peor not enough for us from which we are not cleansed? So he says, we see an altar that looks like idolatry. Remember, remember what happened this time when we did idolatry? When we got caught up in idolatry, why are we doing this? Don't do that. But, but that you must turn away this day from... Hold on. But that you must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it shall be if you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord. For the Lord's tabernacle stands and takes possession among us, but do not rebel against the Lord or rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides, and they mean other than, besides the altar of the Lord our God. <coughs> and here we have a good example of spiritual leadership, calling somebody back, calling somebody into account. Hey, we see this thing going on in your life. In love, man, if you don't like what, what is over there, if you don't like the 
something's wrong with over there, it's separate from us, why not come back here? And I think we as brothers need to, to be that for one another. We need to call one another to do the right thing. <laughs> um, it's hard. Let's be honest, it's not easy. It's easier to say, well, maybe everything's fine when you hear about something going on in someone's life. It's much easier to, eh, let me go talk to Pastor So-and-so about it. Maybe they'll talk to him about it. Let me go talk to this guy about it. Maybe, the, maybe they'll do something. Let me gossip. That'll make me feel better about it. <laughs> Rather than just go to that person. Hey, brother, uh, where are you? I see this happening. Is, am I seeing something wrong? Am I seeing, is something different going on than what it seems like going on? Hey, why don't you come back? Why don't you come back to the Lord? Nevertheless, at the land of your possession, if where you found yourself is not good enough, then come on back is unclean, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and take possession among you, but do not rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides the altar of the Lord our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on the whole congregation of Israel? And this is hearkening back to the The event at AI, where they went, they didn't succeed in battle, they didn't pray, they went and did not succeed in the battle, they came back and the Lord said, there's sin in your camp. Someone, someone took something they should not have taken. And so he, there was a wrath against the entire body. Yes, he, there was specific carried out discipline for him and his close family of Achan, but their lives lost at AI and they did not win that battle because of that sin. And the point of this is that there's, our sin doesn't just affect us. Men, particularly as, as head of your home, your sin doesn't just affect you. And our sin of weakness, which tends to be, I think, the default of our fallen nature, that, ten, that, that if you think back to Adam, he was there he just didn't correct her sin. <laughs> she didn't have to go hunt him, down, hunt him down to have this apple. His sin was not obeying God and not correcting her. And that, that I think, tends to be where we are often, is, is we see sin in others, and instead of correcting it in love like we should, we turn away. And it's not a benefit to them. It doesn't help the kingdom of God. It doesn't help us as we take another decision in weakness, being honest. <coughs> me. And that man did not perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the divisions of Israel, Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knows, the Lord knows our hearts. I'm going to say flowery religious things. The Lord knows our hearts. The Lord God of God, the Lord God of gods, he knows and let Israel itself know if it is in the, is in the rebellion, if it is in rebellion, or if it is in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. If we have built ourselves an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer on it burnt offering or grain offering, or if to offer peace offerings on it, let the Lord Himself require an account. And I believe, based on the fact that they built their altar on the other side of the river. 
that they probably did not intend. They're being truthful here. They probably did not intend to use it as a place for sacrifice. They probably intended to use it as they suggested. But again, it was a, a, a continued small step, not a big thing, not something to get all alarmed about, but it just was not following specifically, worshiping the Lord specifically, doing specifically what he has called us to do. But in fact, we have done it for fear. For a reason saying, in time to come, your descendants may speak to our descendants, saying, what have you to do with the Lord your God? And this again goes back to what I was talking about with the pointing to something physical. If a people, if a man, if a woman are living for the Lord, there should not need to be a physical thing to say, he, he belongs to the Lord. It should be obvious to all around that that person belongs to the Lord. That we don't need a, a bracelet that says <laughs> whatever. We don't need, not that anything's wrong with your, a shirt. I like wearing Christian shirts. Not that anything's, nothing's wrong with those in themselves. But we need to be careful that that is all we have for external signs of what is supposed to be a relationship with the Lord. Therefore, he said, let us now prepare to build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between you and us and our generation after us, that we may perform the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, with our sacrifice, with our peace offerings, that, that your descendants may not say to our descendants in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore, we said that it will be when they say this to us or to our generation in time to come, we may say, here is a replica of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, though not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifice, but it is a witness between you and us. I don't want to belabor that point, but it's, that's an important, for, for me, that is something that is just, it's very easy for me, from in my heart and my mind, to lean on not so much things, but deeds. I'm feeling like I'm good with the Lord because I read my Bible every day this week. I, what, whatever, label your thing. That, that's where I really struggle. These things, tasks, make me feel my relationship is God like that rather than we and those that's true a relationship can go up and down based on are you talking to the person that's that's an important thing however those things that you are doing do not replace the relationship itself I'll stop belaboring that point Therefore, we said that, that it will be when they say this is to our, to, I'm sorry, they, they, therefore we said that it will be when they say this to us or to our generations in time to come, <coughs> that, we, that we may say, here is a replica of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made, though not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifice, but it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn from following the Lord this day to build an altar for burnt offerings, for grain offerings, for sacrifice, besides the altar of the Lord, our God, which is before his tabernacle. Now when Phineas, the priest and the rulers of the congregation, the heads of the divisions of Israel, who were with him, heard the words of the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Master. And the children of Manasseh spoke, for the words they spoke, it pleased them. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because you have not committed this treachery against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord.
it may be, it, it appears to be, and I know this is, again, in a tendency of leadership that when you do, you have, you see somebody who needs correction. You have taken that step to correct them. And their response is something, wow, that sounds pretty good. It may not be actually the fact that they're, they're actually following the Lord or they're doing what they should be doing. But that sure seemed like a good religious response. The Lord knows my heart, as I mentioned earlier. That, that's, that a, that's a response that, as a man, and you, and you take the effort to correct somebody, you actually hear that more often than you think. And so, um, be wary of just accepting that. You can't force people to, to take rebuke. You can't force people to change. The Lord must do that. But quiescing and just saying, well, okay, okay, that sounds good. I don't think is the right, it's not the right uh, thing either. You should leave with them. This is what the Lord said. Come back. I think they were on the right path here when, it, when, they, when they said, rather than be over there, why don't you come be with us where you can worship the Lord, not just talk about, hey, we're, we belong to the Lord too. Look at the altar. But you can actually come and worship in Shiloh. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, and the rulers returned from the children of Reuben and the children of Gad from the land of Gilead and the land of Canaan to the children of Israel and brought back word to them so that the thing pleased the children of Israel. And the children of Israel blessed God and they spoke no more of going against them in battle to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and the children of Gad dwelt. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar witness. For it is a witness between us that the Lord is, <coughs> I'm sorry, is God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these men. I thank you, Lord, uh, for your word. I, I pray, God, that um, or for each of us in here, Lord, that you would highlight areas, God, that we have maybe gone astray or that our heart is focused on um, something other than Jesus and, and what he's done for us in our relationship with him. Romans 10, it says, But the righteousness of faith speaks, as 10.6, in this way. Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who will ascend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We hear that 9 and 10 often. But that comes at the tail end of talking about this is so hard, it's so far, God is so far, he goes up to heaven and bring him down, and who's going to go to, to the abyss and bring him up? But, but it's tank, God is near us. It's easy, not cheap, not free. But Jesus is near. So 
Lord, I thank you, God, that you are near, that um, we don't have to seek external things or big, difficult explanations. But that if we confess and believe, Lord, we'll be saved. I pray, God, that you continue a work in us. Lord, help us, Lord, to be men that are um, sharp, iron sharpening iron with one another. God, we see something in each other's life that, oh, that's kind of, that's ugly. That needs to be fixed. That we're, we can go and love to one another. And God, also, when we receive that in ourselves, Lord, help us to be open to, to hear that and not make excuses. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.